All right, so uh, as of about 5 o'clock today, Eastern Standard Time, about an hour ago, I don't know what's happened in the last hour, but, I, but I'm going to give you the update as, as, as I know it right now. Joe right. Biden has 253 electoral oh, wow. votes. Oh, wow. Donald Trump, 213. That means there is 17 votes, 17 electoral votes for Joe Biden to become the president of the United States. This is the map we're looking at right now. Oh, my God. Okay. The oh. states that are in play that we don't have a declared winner because Michigan was declared for Biden around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Yes. Wisconsin was declared earlier today for Biden as well. This is where we stand as of right now. Georgia, North Carolina, one district in Maine, Arizona, and Nevada still, and Pennsylvania, still yet to be declared. If Biden is winning right now, by the way, in Nevada, Biden is winning right now in Arizona. Let's talk about Arizona and Nevada. That's going to be the quickest way for him to become the president of the United States of America. Those Question. results. Yes. Is it the first person to get to 270? No, or it's, it's, not, it? it's not a race. Once you get to, you can't, okay. once you hit 270, it doesn't come back. Okay, so you're there. Uh, okay, so right now, Arizona and Nevada are expected to release their final, their, sometime, sometime at 9 o'clock tonight, Arizona's going to update their, their vote count, and they expect Nevada and Arizona to complete all of the counting by Friday. If Biden holds on to his lead in Arizona, Biden holds on to his lead in Nevada, remember the votes that are being counted right now are the mail-in votes, the drop-off mm. votes. And everybody believes the mail-in votes and the drop-off votes are skewing towards Biden. Yeah. He is already in the lead in Arizona and Nevada. If he okay. wins Arizona and Nevada on Friday, it's over. He is the president. It. It's over. He is the president of the United States of America. If, if he does not win Arizona or Nevada and it becomes more contested Arizona or Nevada, then Biden has to rely on Pennsylvania to win. Pennsylvania mm -hmm. right now, Trump is leading. But there's about 15% of the votes that have not been counted. Those are all mail-in and drop-off votes in and around the Pittsburgh and Philadelphia areas. We mm -hmm. know that in and around the metropolitan areas of Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, it's 80% plus Democrat. Yes. It do, does, is there enough mail-in votes to bring Biden back from behind in Pennsylvania. Trump suspects there is. You want to know why? Because he is bringing a lawsuit right now to stop the counting, to disenfranchise, right. to disenfranchise voters in Pennsylvania because he knows those votes that have not yet been counted, been counted. are not are votes you? for Trump. That's wild. But, but you know what? It doesn't matter, Pennsylvania, if Biden holds off in Arizona and Nevada. Pennsylvania becomes moot, irrelevant. Yep. Yep. There's also, they're also counting votes in Georgia. Trump is about 70,000 votes ahead in Georgia right now, but they have several hundred thousand votes to count, all again, mail-in, drop-off, and where are these votes that are coming from the mail-in and drop-off? In and around the Atlanta, Decatur area. Who's it living in that area, Yo-Yo? It's Democrats. It's Democrats. Yep. So yeah. it's possible that Biden makes a comeback in Georgia. We don't know yet. If yeah. Biden makes a comeback in Georgia and he loses Nevada and he loses Arizona, and he oh, loses Pennsylvania, 
He's likely to win. There's still one vote left in Maine that they're counting. He's likely to win Maine. And then he's still the president. So for basically, for Trump to win, he's got to hold off Biden in Georgia. He's got to come back in Arizona. He's got to come back in Nevada. And he's got to hold off Biden in Pennsylvania when all the, all the votes that still need to be tallied are the mail-ins from Philadelphia. It is unlikely at this point that the pumpkin is going to be the president in January. I mean, we don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. The game ain't over till it's over, as they say, right? right? Until, until the ref blows the whistle and the game's over, the game's not over. But right now, Joe Biden should be preparing to be the next president of the United States of America. Now, Trump, Trump and his uh, campaign, they're going to start calling for recounts. They're going to start asking courts to invalidate results. Now, courts can't invalidate results. They're not going to, judge isn't going to go in and start counting. What, what a judge can do, though, is ask, is ask for a recount. They can sue and ask for recounts. Uh, they can sue and try to invalidate some of the ballots and do a recount. If they do a recount, just historically, in 2016, for example, Trump is asking for a recount in Wisconsin and Michigan. In 2016, Hillary Clinton asked for a recount in Wisconsin. They did a recount, and it changed the results by 35 votes. So, oh, wow. you know, recounts don't really change much. In, in Florida in 2000, remember when I told you that, you know, Bush beat Gore by a couple hundred votes? They did a right. recount in Florida. It didn't really change <laughs> the results much. You want to know why? Yeah. Why? It's, it's, it's the theory of Albert Einstein. Okay, and it's not E equals MC squared. It's if you do the That's same thing again and again and expect a different result. Insanity. That's insanity. So we're going to recount all the votes again, and we're going to get the same freaking result. Wild. That's wow. what's going to happen within a margin yeah. of error of 20, 30, 50, 100 votes. But mm-hmm. you're not going to get, so I'm not worried about a recount. You're not going to get a situation where all of a sudden there's a recount and Wisconsin or Michigan, or if it happens in Arizona, all of a sudden they say, we recounted and guess what? We found 100,000 more votes for Trump. Trump's the winner. Not gonna happen. I, I mean, they may find- Here on YouTube, I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah. Brad. There's 29 Super C commenting on Pennsylvania. My, my, drama in Pennsylvania. Biden has a lot of votes in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh still to be counted, but can he turn over 500K votes? Time will tell. That's right, but, but you wanna know what? It, I really believe, okay, the, by the way, the votes that need to be counted in Arizona, you know where they're from? Phoenix. Phoenix. Who's yeah. living in Phoenix? Yep. Democrats. So, yeah. the, Democrats. So the, the mail-in votes in all of these states are from the major metropolitan areas. Yeah. That lean Democrat. In that picture, that's where I had a little bit of hope when I saw it was like Phoenix County. I'm like, okay, yeah. we might it be on Democrat. something. So I don't so, expect a recount to do anything. If assuming right. Trump is going to lose, the only way he wins is if courts start invalidating votes and saying these votes don't count. And if you start invalidating vote, because then that would be stealing an election. That would be disenfranchising people. You would have, you know, you know, they would have to board up all the stores again on Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue yeah. because. Th- sure. At that point, Trump would be, a, to me, a leader who is not a legitimate winning winner of the presidency. That is the only so, way at this point. So, to me, I don't see that happening. And did you did you did you hear about Trump canceling the Johnson Amendment, which is why like a lot of the preachers are saying God wants you to vote for Trump because basically they would get like a tax cut. I don't know what the Johnson Amendment is. So here, I I have it. So it's like it's a provision in the U.S. tax code since 1954 that prohibits all 501c3 nonprofit organizations from endorsing or opposing political candidates. So like now preachers are all talking about, hey, God wants you to vote for Trump because of 
stuff like that, which is why he even has some of the the uh, rappers that are coming up because it's all it's really all selfish selfish stuff. It's not for the people. It's wild. Like he's literally he's finding different ways and different pockets to find like to get you know. It doesn't matter. To try and win. It doesn't matter. The jack o' lantern, the light inside the jack o' lantern, is going to be is, is going to be blown out very soon. And we're, gonna, and, we're, and we're gonna roll that guy right out of the White House. That's basically yes. what's going to happen. All right. Meanwhile, the Democrats are expected to keep the House of Representatives, although dozens of seats have not been called. The Senate, which is Republican, looks like it's gonna stay Republican. I don't think the Democrats are gonna win the four seats that they need to take over the U.S. Senate. In Arizona, the Democrat Mark Kelly is the winner which bodes well for Biden if uh, the Democratic senator, who was not the incumbent, not the person in the Senate, he was the challenger, beat the incumbent Republican. That means people were voting Democrat in Arizona. It bodes well for Biden. Also, former Governor John Hickenlooper flipped Colorado's Senate seat from red to blue, red being Republican, blue meaning Democrat. However, However, the Democrats thought they were going to win Maine. Susan Collins, Republican, won. They thought they may win in South Carolina. Lindsey Graham won. They thought they may win in Montana. Steve Bullock, the former governor of Montana, lost. So three very, very competitive races that the Democrats thought they would flip to take control of the Senate. They did not. In Georgia, I believe one Republican is going to be the winner. There's going to be a runoff between the other. Hopefully, the Democrat will win, but it still may not be enough to flip the Senate. The only thing I can say is this. In 2018, we didn't think Democrats were going to take over the House. And then weeks and weeks later, after all the mail-in votes were counted, the Democrats ended up having a good night. So hopefully, it ends up being a good night for the Democrats in the, in the Senate as well. We'll see what happens. But That's the energy. But right now... All our eyes, there we go, all our eyes <laughs> should be on Arizona and Nevada. Because yes. if Arizona and Nevada stays blue, meaning Democrat, and we'll know this by Friday, our long four-year nightmare will be over. Finally! Now, I will say this. Yes. It, will, it will be a political victory. But it will be, right. at least to me, in a way, a hollow victory, because after everything that we have gone through in the United States as a nation, with everything that happened in the last four years caused by Donald Trump, I would have believed that Americans would have said, this is not what I'm about, and uh, this is not what America is about we don't want this man to be president yet it was an election that if Why? biden that if biden holds out wins by the smallest smallest right. of margins and what a disappointment i have in americans our country in yeah. our country what a disappointment i, I have believe it. Uh, i couldn't believe it. and and now i got to walk down the street and one out of every two people I got to look at and go, you're an a-hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're an a-hole. You're yeah. okay. In the, you're an a-hole. In the Facebook comments, I have Keisha Mitchell saying Trump doesn't want to lose because he's afraid he will get charged for all the crimes he's committed. That's what Yo-Yo's always saying. But he may very well be. He may very Absolutely. well be. And Even his, Jessica. Yeah. Even Jessica Limi said that uh, I swore this election would have been a landslide, not in a sitting on edge of a chair election. So that's what we all thought. Like I, I just knew that it wouldn't be this many Americans that would still vote for this blatant, racist, homophobic idiot of a person. It's wild to me. All right. By the wow. way, by the way, before we get to hump day, a bit of unfortunate news with the form I-944. Remember I announced the other day it that was there was an injunction. Every day this thing is a yo-yo. Well, the Seventh Circuit, which is the appeals court <laughs> hey. to the Northern District of Illinois, they set aside the injunction, which means now, again, you got to file the I-944. But Biden becomes yeah. president. Hopefully he'll get rid of it. All right, get let's have out. some fun. Bring him out.
Strap yourself in. A Miami model walked the streets with a phone. Did you see this, Yo-Yo? Hidden in her no. back pocket to see how many people <laughs> were going to stare at her ass while she was out walking about. Footage gathered by model Alexis Morgan catches a number of men taking a look at her derriere as she strolls past. At the beginning of the clip, she, she explains, I'm going to see how many stares my booty gets before tucking the phone into her back pocket. The compilation video shows several men turning around to gawk in her direction as Alexis strolls through a supermarket and past the bar filled with drinkers. The trend to film how many people are caught on camera staring from a phone in the back pocket that originated on TikTok. The model now has more than 4 million followers on Instagram. Wow. People, she were, does. people were left in stitches by some of the hilarious reactions she caught on camera with one man caught grinning in appreciation while two drinkers appear to follow her with a lingering eye as she walks past the sports bar. Uh, many praised the last man caught on camera who was seen peeking from behind a set of trolleys. One person wrote, I'm crying the last one. He almost broke his neck. Another yeah. agreed replying, it was the last one for me. Dude turned his head a whole 180 degrees. Vanessa, you're a woman. Have, do you notice this stuff? I mean, yeah, I definitely notice these things. But I mean, I'm not going out of my way to, to film, film it and it. have it go viral. Yeah. It reminds you know it, remi seeking. it reminds me of the Seinfeld episode. Remind it just reminds me, you know, I haven't watched Seinfeld in a very long time. But it reminds me of the Seinfeld episode when George was staring at this woman's cleavage and got caught staring at this woman's cleavage. And Jerry says to him, George, it's like looking at the sun. You look, you turn around. You don't sit you there around. and stare. <laughs> it's just you look at the sun, it's like a second go. I mean, you don't go Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you that get like right. 1.5 seconds. It's like what? It's like if you gotta if, make it good. Right, it's like looking at the sun. You look, you go. <laughs> it's wild. That's Before wild. it burns you. I, I wonder, does that happen? You're a good looking guy, yo yo. Does that happen to you too? You get women staring at you? I mean, it's definitely it's different. not as. It's different, right? It's, yeah, it's different. It's not, it's as, not common as common as it is. As yeah. It's, I, what? it's not as aggressive. Like, guys are super aggressive with this. I'll walk down the streets here. And, and they literally are just like, hey, 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 hey. Or just look. Like, you know what I mean? I it's think, wild to me. I think guys are pigs. I mean, I've gone on, yeah. I've, I've been out to dinner with women, and I walk in, and, you know, it's obvious I'm with this woman. No, and they don't, and they don't give a crap. You know, I could turn around, care. I could turn around for a second and get a drink. There's 10 guys talking to the woman I'm with. I'm like, dude. You. They'll, walk, they'll talk right to them in here. front of Yeah, I'm like, you know, right. guys are a bunch of freaking animals. What's with that? Yeah, yeah. And it annoys that. I, I think that annoys that's like me. Big disrespect. Well, you guys are gentlemen, so it's different. You wouldn't know. You guys are gentlemen. I don't do that. But that annoys me about men. I think men are animals. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same, Brad. Same. You same agree, thought. too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. But, I mean, I don't imagine, imagine as much as I used to. Right. But now let me ask you a question because you you have you you live with your you live with your boyfriend, so obviously you go out. Yeah. You're, you're together. You're, you're yeah. not presumably a monogamous couple. I assume you are. So you go out. I assume that happens too. Does your boyfriend get jealous? Does he get mad? Right? Because you're a beautiful woman. No, he he doesn't get jealous. He actually enjoys the fact that I can still seek other people's attention and right. they can't. Okay. Yeah. That's the way to look at it. It's okay, a different that's level. That's good. a different level of savage. Right, because because he he's confident and in, in, he's confident, right? Exactly. But Nesquik, yep. is it the same oh, the other way around? If a girl is like all up on his jock, like at the bar, like when you like, you know, what I mean, like in front of you, or if you walk out to the bathroom, do you still do you feel that same way? Like, damn, yeah, my man's got it, or you just you get jealous? Yeah, I'm not a jealous person. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. Look at that. Look yeah, at that. Right, right. Excuse right, right. me. Girl. Unicorn coming through. Get out of here, right? right. Give a little exactly. elbow. Give a little elbow when the no one's looking. The unicorn has arrived. <laughs> one in a million. Exactly. Excuse me, ma'am. I can see you doing that. I can totally see you doing that. <laughs> Meanwhile, a woman in Georgia selling a bikini online was asked for a photo of it being worn so the man could see what it looked like before buying. So she gave him exactly what he asked for, sort of. Tess Wilson had posted a photo of a black swimsuit in size small on Facebook Marketplace for $5.
before receiving a oh, message from a potential buyer that she had originally planned to ignore. It read, any pics with being worn, I'd like to see what it looks like on before buying. <laughs> now, Tess was having none of this man's request and paid no attention to it, but her brother seized the opportunity to take revenge. Her brother, Kate decided to fill in as the model instead, and his expert modeling has been compared to a Victoria's Secret model's professionality. After the sibling hatched yes. a plan, Tess replied, sure, one second, before sending a series of photos of her brother, Cade, modeling the string bikini like a pro, <laughs> striking some beach babe poses for the inquisitive shopper. Uh, she said, so I'm selling a bathing suit on Facebook yard sale and a man comments and asks me if he can see a picture of it being worn before buying. Of course, I was going to ignore the comment, but Cade couldn't resist. Yo, yo. That's hilarious. Would you do that? No. No, I wouldn't do that either. Yeah, I'm good. I, but you know, I, like, I, I like her response. I'm going to tell you something. Kate, Kate, is more, right. Kate is more of a man than I am. I don't think I would. <laughs> I, I don't think I would do it. First Look, of all, he's just so confident. First of all, confident I don't even believe I would I would even fit into that bikini, <laughs> let alone. <laughs> I think I would break it. Brad, do we have a new contest to see Brad in a bikini? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of a Not sudden, all of a sudden, everyone's like, "What happened to Brad Live? He hasn't been on for months." <laughs> He's on that island, remember? Exactly. Well, I didn't. I don't have to. I don't have to strip and go into the ocean and do the show from under the ocean, right? So happy right. to hear it. Yes, so to I'm going to be here in New York with everybody. Meanwhile, a woman <laughs> discovered that a boyfriend of four years cheated on her most of 2020. A video detailing the bizarre infidelity reveal currently boasts more than one million views. The incriminating footage begins innocently enough with a selfie of her boyfriend who is sporting sunglasses. Then things take a turn, however, when she reveals the reflection of a girl's leg poking out of a car window Ooh. in one of uh. the lenses. She captioned the clip, check the reflection in your boyfriend's sonny's ladies. The Ooh. videographer later described in the comment section how she brought the bombshell to her beau's attention. Sydney, of course, called him out and said her boyfriend denied everything. He called me crazy. <laughs> he said that that was a friend's girlfriend and that he's allowed to also have friends. Wow, right. gaslighter, right? You know what gaslighting is, wow. right? When you're caught, yeah. you know what gaslighting is. This guy's a gaslighter. When you're caught and then you just <laughs> manipulate it to make the person think they're crazy. You have to lie right? till the end. Yeah, you have to Listen, stick that's to a gaslighter stick right to here. That story. Mm -hmm. Now, Kid that's said she. Story. Did, I'm sticking with it. Now, Kid said she discovered a week later that he had been philandering for the past month with five different women. Woo! Woo! This Woo. man gets around. Needless to say, the scorned woman's detective skills garnered her more than 175,000 <laughs> likes. <laughs> And sympathetic responses from the TikTok peanut gallery. Said one commenter, mm. guys always thinking they could pull a fast one on us. Don't know why he's got the sunnies on. He's not that bright. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you, like so, so what do you think? What do you think, Yo Yo I and Vanessa? It. TikTok, I love TikTok. I love TikTok. Is you it find great? so many random things yeah. out there. That, yeah, but he got I, caught. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. I could I could already tell you exactly how he felt. His stomach like fell to the ground when she came out and like you know showed him that post because that's like damn, I really got caught for something dumb, a dumb selfie. Guys are dumb, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta be smarter if you're gonna cheat. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, because be meanwhile, it turns out that some people, by the way, they've been using some dating apps to reach voters in swing states. Ben Wyreth, a 29-year-old software engineer in the Bay Area, used the popular dating app Hinge to get out the vote. He set his location to a city in the battleground state, Pennsylvania, where he is knowledgeable about the voting rules. He then used photos of himself with animals in a bid to motivate people to connect with him through hinge banking, a spin on phone banking, as a form of political campaigning to encourage people to vote. People started using hinge for this kind of voter outreach because users can easily set their location down to the neighborhood or county with the free version of the app. Uh, let me ask you a question. How would you like it if you were on a dating app and you're like, you think you meet somebody and then they're just telling you to go vote for somebody? I'd be like, 
I don't want to now. I don't, uh, now I would still wouldn't change my vote, but I would make that person feel better. Like now I'm not going to vote for your candidate. I don't care who the hell you want me to vote oh. for. That would annoy me. <laughs> That'd be a yeah. sweet start. That's a great icebreaker. Yeah, it's a great icebreaker. Be like, no, thank you. I would like unmatch. <laughs> yeah, unmatch you. And finally, in a last minute desperate attempt to motivate people to vote, some celebrities decided to post some sexy photos. Kylie Jenner posted a skimpy bikini pic accompanied by the caption, but are you registered to vote? Oh God, I hate these. Oh, God. Meanwhile, YouTube star Tana Morgan, Matt Manju, may have committed a crime when she told her five and a half million subscribers, <laughs> If you send me proof oh, you God. voted for Biden, I'll send you a nude photo. Oh, my gosh. Dancer Jenna Dewan, wife of Channing Tatum, posted a selfie in her underwear saying her postpartum diet includes, you'll never guess, voting. This follows <laughs> an awkward and cringy PSA from celebs who got naked in an effort to get people to vote with participants like Sarah Silverman, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Rock, and Tiffany Haddish. Meanwhile, rapper Lizzo had been sharing a steady stream of stylist election-themed snaps over the past month, starting with an anti-Sam yeah, getup in mid See, this I can in mid October, with. complete with star-spangled hat and blue blazer. She captioned this I can rock with, she yes. captioned the Instagram post. I see you using your power to protest <laughs> and your freedom of speech. Did any of this motivate you to vote? No. What did, I think this is self-serving. No, I, I think, by the way, I don't think it motivates anyone to vote, my personal opinion. I think it's self-serving to the celebrity because they do something that's attached to voting so they know they'll get the publicity for it. I think it's all self-serving. Right. That's my opinion. Right. Yeah, like, it, they'll get the it shares. It annoys the hell out of me. That, like, those, those type of posts annoy the hell out of me. It's like, man, like the caption is like, man, just had the best dinner I cooked a steak and asparagus and it's so beautiful outside and it's literally just them in like a pool like <laughs> half naked it's like what's that even have to do with the the whole post I, I hate hate posts like that i find a lot of social media is so bs because it's not real none of it's real yeah. none of it is real it's all fake to make you believe it's real but it's all fake crap yes the only yes. thing that's real on social media that i can confirm this live show, because we are who we are. Right here, right now. Right? You can't, you can't, it's you live. can't, it's live. We can't make the crap make up, that. right? This is who we are, right? That. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.